In this video, I'm going to talk to you about recording with all of your plugins active at incredibly low latency with the SoundGrid Studio system. So, let's get into it. With the SoundGrid Studio system, your recording still happens where it always has in the past, inside your DAW of choice. A key component for using the SoundGrid network while recording in a native DAW is Studio Rack. This is a cross-platform DAW plugin that lets you save a chain of up to eight plugins and offload the processing from your CPU to a dedicated SoundGrid DSP server. If you're in local CPU mode like you see here, your computer is dealing with the plugin processing. However, if you switch it to SoundGrid, the plugin is being offloaded. And this is where the magic starts to happen. Using SoundGrid compatible hardware with the SoundGrid ACO or Core Audio driver selected provides you up to 64 mono or 32 stereo voices dedicated solely to Studio Rack processing. You can keep an eye on how many of the voices you've assigned to Studio Rack and how many you have left by occasionally moving your eyes to this window right here. This is totally independent of how many channels from other IOs you're streaming through the driver and keeps you up to date on your Studio Rack assignments used and remaining voices. We have a separate video dealing with recording with Studio Rack in HD, HD Native, and HDX systems from Avid. Studio Rack works alongside the eMotion ST Mixer to create numerous personalized monitor mixes that use the same plugins that you're hearing in your mix, all with virtually no latency. This way, you can control what you hear through your monitors while you're recording and send personal headphone mixes to your musicians. Before we go any further, I think it's a good idea for me to give you an insight as to how things work behind the scenes and how Studio Rack and the Emotion ST Mixer fit into your workflow. So let's do it. First, let's outline the signal flow of introducing Studio Rack and the Emotion ST Mixer into your session. An input signal travels from your I.O. to your DAW of choice. Here we're showing Pro Tools. Through Studio Rack, back to your DAW, out to the eMotion mixer, and back to your I.O. as what you hear through your speakers. Pretty simple, right? That's because this is the workflow you're used to with any plugin that you put in your session, only with the addition of eMotion ST, which we'll get to in a moment. Our problem with this setup is that you are subject to driver buffering, sometimes making it difficult to record additional tracks with or even without plugins, as this buffer introduces latency. Studio Rack and the Emotion ST Mixer provide a solution to get around this. This is how we do it. Studio Rack and Emotion ST allow you to monitor your input signal through plugins, bypassing the DAW and latencies altogether. When Studio Rack monitor status switches to input, the IO input signal is split to two paths. One path goes to the DAW and is being recorded, and the second goes directly to the inserted Studio Rack. This is what we listen to. The output of the studio rack is fed directly into the eMotion ST mixer, while the return of your DAW is muted. This can be identified on the plugin itself by the mute button being highlighted. The reason that we mute the signal returning to the DAW is to avoid double monitoring and phase issues, neither of which you want. That's all great, right? But how do we control what we hear? The Emotion ST Mixer has a unique dedicated Studio Rack mixer layer showing all the Studio Rack instantiations that are input monitoring, allowing you to control levels and panning for the control room and your musicians. When recording is finished, the monitor path switches back to playback and the output of your DAW, with Studio Racks going back into playback mode for normal DAW playback. OK, but what about the tracks that are already recorded, I hear you ask? Well. There are many options here. By default, the output of your DAW is routed to the mixer layer of the eMotion ST, and this is where you will control the mix of recorded material in the control room and headphone mixes. A good thing to note here is that the plugin effects that you're hearing while you're recording with Studio Rack are not getting printed to the track. You're always recording dry, so you can change those effects up whenever you want. This gives you a lot of flexibility to change up what's being heard through your monitors and your headphone mixes. Now we know all that, let's see it in practice. Right now, I'm using a DigiGrid iOS, which comes with a built-in SoundGrid DSP server, and my DAW of choice is Pro Tools. 
First, we need to make sure that the playback engine is set to Wave Sound Grid. Next thing you should do is check your I.O. setup in your DAW to make sure that all your available ins and outs are visible. The session I'm working in today is a work in progress. Most of it is already recorded and ready to go. Today, we're recording a vocal track. Now, as we've mentioned, another part of the SoundGrid Studio system is the Emotion ST Mixer. This sits in the background at all times. And if I press play here in Pro Tools and then switch to Emotion, you'll see that all recorded material in my session is currently coming through channel one in the mixer. That's how it routes by default. You can also stem it out to up to eight channels. Doing this helps you fine tune the mix to all sends and headphones a lot easier. On the right hand side of the Emotion ST mixer, you'll see a bunch of auxes. Regardless of me choosing one channel as default or stemming it out to eight, I use these to bus out to my headphones. Okay, so we've got some mixes set up. You know your way around. It's time to do some recording. I need to make sure that I'm in sound grid mode, not local CPU from this drop down menu at the top of the plugin. And I have to check that my input channels on all record enabled tracks are consistent with the input channels selected in the monitor section of Studio Rack. It's also a good idea to name the studio rack so that it matches the name of the track. You'll see why in a few minutes. Studio rack needs to be in input mode for recording with plugins at low latency. You can either set this up manually by literally just clicking input mode, or you can set it up automatically, which makes it a lot easier. To do that, head into peripherals, then the MIDI window. Select Huey and select Wave Sound Grid Studio Rack for both your ins and your outs. Then click OK. Now, when I hit record, the plugin automatically goes into input mode, and when I press stop, it will stay in input mode. It'll only go back into playback mode when I hit play to hear what I've already recorded. If you click on the Studio Rack layer of the Emotion ST Mixer, you will see all of your instantiations of the plugin that you have in your DAW session, as long as they have an input channel assigned to them. While you're working in your DAW, the Emotion ST is always sitting in the background and can be brought to the front by hitting the Mixer button in any of your Studio Rack instantiations like this. It's good to note that hitting the mixer button in Studio Rack will bring up the last view in the Emotion ST mixer that you had open. As you can see here, each channel has its own set of controls, and by default, the main faders send to the main mix of the Emotion ST mixer, which is probably what you're listening to in the control room. To adjust what you're sending to the auxes, you can either adjust the levels in this top part, like I'm doing here, or click, say, for example, on the title Mix 3, and Control will flip to the larger faders, and they'll be highlighted in blue so you remember exactly what you're adjusting. Plus, this gives you access to the panner for the auxes and gives you the option to control your input selector. This selector has three options, input, pre, and post. You can see from this window which studio racks are in playback and which are in input. And you need to be aware that we're only controlling the levels of the studio racks that are in input mode. This is also why it's a good idea to name your studio racks the same as the track name in your DAW. Otherwise, it can get a bit difficult to remember exactly what you're adjusting between them. If you're working in a session that only has one or two tracks with Studio Rack on them, then you don't even need to go into the Emotion ST Mixer. You can adjust your sends directly from the plugin. All you need to do is click here on this sends button, and the same controls that you're seeing in Emotion ST will be available to you. As you can see, if I put the Studio Rack plugin and the Emotion ST Mixer side by side, moving a send level in one moves it in the other. The advantage of the Emotion ST Mixer for you is a broader view and more tweakability. Choices are great and let you improve your workflow your way.
Finally, because Studio Rack lets you save a chain of up to eight plugins, we wanted to give you a way to easily check on your latency. You can check on latency on one plugin or an entire chain by moving your eyes to this part of the plugin and clicking on this arrow here. The information is laid out for you so it's easy to see and you can work faster. Happy recording.